Hey there Floss Tube, it's Jessica the Schoolhouse Stitcher. Uh, it's been a little while, but I finally found myself on a day when I'm here, my husband's not, and I actually have nothing to do. So I figured why not film a Floss Tube video since I've been accumulating a pile of stuff to show you in the corner of my living room for months now. Alright, so God, getting back into these things after so long is tough. You never know where to start. Um, let's start with FFOs because I have some of those. Um, the first things, well, first of all, I mentioned a video or two ago that I did go to the Primitive Stitchers Retreat. Um, this year it was held in Memphis, Tennessee, and I've gone every year since it was held in, uh, held in Marietta, Georgia. So the past four or five years, I think. Um, but anyway, there's a framer at the Who Goes to the Retreat named uh, Patty Nicolizzi uh, of Buy My Hand Needleworks. And I, a couple of times I've dropped off things to have her frame. Um, you can pick frames at the show and she will take them back with her. She'll frame it, send you a picture, and then she'll mail it to you. You can also mail her, uh, mail her your work and pick them up at the retreat or mail your work and she'll mail it back to you. Um, but I just always like dropping it off at the retreat so that I can um, take a look at the frames and, that she has. Uh, but this year I dropped off three pieces for her to frame. And the first one, they should be very familiar to all of you if you've seen my, uh, my finished parades. Um, the first one, this was a free Quaker sampler. Quaker in six parts by some designers I cannot remember. And it is currently available as a freebie on a Facebook group, which I will link in the description down below. Uh, but this is, it looks kind of black in the, in the video, but it's actually more of a navy blue. I don't think you can, I don't think it's gonna, we're gonna get a good color today. Um, but I started this one years ago. Uh, when the freebie first came out and just finished it. Uh, I don't think I dated it. Not too long ago. It was while I was still, do it was while I was doing Floss Tube, so within the last couple years. Um, get some close up. This was the very last motif I had to stitch and I messed up on it. If you compare mine against the original, uh, this center stock, I think I had added like one square too many horizontally in the pot or in the outline or something and I didn't want to have to frog the whole thing so I said you know what I'm just gonna make that stem two wide instead of one wide and I'm gonna go with it and the birds are gonna be a little closer to the edge and it's fine if I had never told you you would never have known uh, but I'm very excited to have that one back uh, this was one my I showed my husband my um, box of finishes and told him that he could pick one for me to have framed and that's the one that he chose so that's the one that he wants to hang up in our house the other ones i dropped off were lizzie kate's joy to the world glare ooh worse glare uh, better all right um, I stitched this with the DMC conversion. This was a, it was one of the, it was, it's one of those little mini kits that comes with the fabric, the chart, and some beads or a charm. I think this one came with a charm. It doesn't actually have beads on this, um, but they were used for like a small ornament or pen keep or something that came with the, the chart. I really like this frame. It has a, um, I don't know if you can see, but it has a little bit of red in it. And I also have her kind of companion chart to this. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but I'm gonna, my plan is to stitch that one before the coming Prima Stitches Retreat and have her frame it in the same frame so I can hang them together. And the last one, and the one that I was most excited about is Primitive Needle Halloween Revelry. This was in a Just Cross Stitch magazine. I can't remember which one offhand, 
um, but I will again mention it down below. Incidentally, you can people sell the chart on eBay. They sell the pages from the magazine or the magazine itself for like thirty-five dollars. Don't do that. Just buy the DVD with the all the decade of just cross stitch issues. It's a much better deal for your money. Um, but this is just a nice kind of distressed black frame. Um, I did stitch with this with the called for colors. If you stitch it, uh, you will need, I forget what color the black is, but get two skeins. I had one skein, I was stitching one over two on 40 count, and I ran out. So I had to do some, and my dye lots did not match exactly, but you can't tell because I did some creative uh, floss rationing to make it work. Uh, so I was basically like, I'll do the border in this skein and do the thingies in that skein. Um, or do the letters in a different skein so that you couldn't really, couldn't really tell as much. But I love this. This is one of my favorite things I've ever stitched and it was the first thing I ever stitched on 40 count. So that is already on display for Halloween. And then my last FFO, well, semi-FFO, because I, I need to do a couple things to it, and I'll tell you that in a moment. Oop, dog fur. Is a freebie from Lizzie Kate. This is All Hallows Eve, and I made it into a trivet finish, because I finally found trivets at the thrift store. I never find trivets at the thrift store. And then I found four and it was glorious. Uh, so I just laced this and onto mat board and popped it in here. Um, now I say this is a semi finish because it's not actually attached yet. Um, so what I did is I had actually, I cut the mat board a little bit too small. Um, so I have a plan for how to, I don't want to I'm always hesitant to glue things down. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of black mat board and cut it to fit, put a magnet on it, and do a magnet. Because I tested it with a different piece of mat board and it's just thin enough to where it's not gonna, it's not gonna um, extend too far out of the front. And that way I'll be able to change it out since like I said, I never find trivets. Uh, so that way this trivet will not be held up in my storage for Halloween um, when I could be using it for other seasons as well. Uh, this freebie, I think it was also on a Facebook group that's for Halloween stitching. And if I remember it, I'll put it below. Make my little hand signal so I'll know when I'm going through this put something in the description box. Uh, but I really love the way this came out. This is stitched on 40 count vintage country mocha. No, sorry, 32 count vintage country mocha with um, anchor black. And I don't know, I don't think I mentioned what the others were stitched on. Um, Halloween Revelry, I think I mentioned that's 40 count vintage country mocha. Uh, the Joy to the World was just whatever came with the kit. I think it's like 30 count Northern cross linen or something, like whatever that's called, the cross linen that's really stiff and not that fun to work with. And then the Quaker sampler was on 28 count, like antique white Monaco or something because that's what they had available when I started it. And then I also had a few, fin oh, sorry, I just noticed that this little guy is in the background. So I'm in a different place today, obviously, because it just happens to be um, where the light is in my apartment right now. Um, but I was, yeah, talking and talking about Prim Stitches Retreat, especially remind me of this little guy. So a couple years ago, I went to the Prim Stitches Retreat in Columbus, Ohio. And as usual at the retreat, they have a merchant mall and they sell not just, you know, patterns and uh, 
kits and fabric and threads, but they also sell finishing materials and things that other people have made, like so. So I saw this and I just had to have him because he was so adorable with his little ears and his nose. Had to have him. So I bought him. I'm packing up to go to fly home. I put the pins in my check baggage. Didn't want to have any problems there. I wrapped him up very carefully, put him in my carry-on because I didn't want anything to happen to him, especially his little flower. Well, I'm going through security in the Columbus airport and they pulled my carry-on bag. And they go, ma'am, is this yours? I said, oh, yes it is. And being the complete weirdo that I am, and also apparently a babbler when faced with authority figures, I go, oh yeah, that's fine. They're like, can we search it? Or, or not can we search it, but we're gonna have to search your bag. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. I've never had my bag searched before. <laughs> They're just like, okay. So they start going through my bag they find the um the things that I'd wrap this in and they pull it out and they go you feel it they go i think it i think it's this and do you know what's in here okay oh yeah that's a pin cushion i bought it at a cross stitch retreat it was the prim citrus society retreat i've never been to columbus before they have a merchant ball and it was really cool and they saw a lot of handmade things that's a pin cushion it's shaped like a bunny she's like okay so she opens the bag and she pulls him out and she looks at him. She looks at me. She looks at the bunny. And then she just holds it up and calls out to her colleague, Hey, it's a bunny. <laughs> so this little guy got my bag searched at the Columbus airport. <laughs> Um, and now every time I see him, I laugh hysterically because I always think it's a buddy. <sighs> uh, which incidentally, I got home and I posted on the group Facebook page. I'm like, oh, ha ha, this little guy got my bag searched. And the person who made it posted back and said something like, oh crap. I probably should have warned people that I stuffed some of them with shot pellets. <laughs> So yeah, that's the story of how I got through security with some shot pellets because it's shaped like a bunny pin cushion. Whoops. And I was so careful. I was so proud that I took the pins out and it totally did not matter. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a digression from where we were going. But I saw him and I had to, I love telling that story because it's just, it makes me laugh every single time. Um, what I was going for over here were my finishes since my last video. So the first thing you will recognize from my last video, I don't think I had finished this at that time. I think I was close to it, but I hadn't quite finished. Um, this is one of the folk eggs from Prairie Schooler. And I think last time I was just filling out some of the little curly cues in backstitch. But this is on 32 count black by Zweiger with the, uh, the called for DMC. So that's cute. I don't know if I'll do the others. The, uh, there are three in the series um, that are they're on in the, uh, the magazine together. Um, I don't know if I'll do the others in the series, but I really, I just, I like the colors on this one with the, um, the kind of teal and the bird. So that is finish number one. Finish number two, or three, I didn't really keep track of the order I finished things, is by Little House Needleworks, and this is the Stitching Bee. I think that's what it's called. It's uh, one of the club kits from the Silver Needle, which I am actually not a member of that club, but a very kind stitcher loan me the chart. Thank you so much. Uh, I did not use the called for colors because I started to pull them and realized I had none of them. So I just substituted with whatever um, overdyes I had on hand 
that look pretty close to the picture. And this is on 32 count light exemplar, I think, by Lakeside Linen. Super cute. Uh, my other finish is was also a whip in my last video. This is Bucilla's Lace Partridge. I love this so much. I think it's one of my favorite things I've ever stitched. Um, it's stitched on this gorgeous um, red 32 count linen that I think is an, based on the feel of it, I think it's an R&R &R linen. Um, and I think it is unfortunately no longer being produced. But I love it. And I have just enough to stitch Blackbird Designs Winter Delivery on this half. I'm not really sure how FFO this yet. I was going between framing it and putting it, framing it, putting it in a trivet, or putting it in a box, um, a box lid, because I have, ooh, or the bottom of a tray. I'll have to pull out my FFO box and see what works. Or, you know, I'll just make it into a pillow. I don't know. Things tend to stay in my FFO box for an embarrassing long time. I'm really sorry, McKenna. <sighs> and speaking of McKenna, my last finish, my favorite finish. Um, McKenna was able to hook me up with the chart. This is Prairie Moon's Liberty. I love this. This is stitched on 40 count Ancient, I believe, by Picture This Plus, um, with none of the called for threads because I didn't like how dark they were. So I used, I think this is Classic Colorworks Nighty Night, Weak Starworks Cayenne, and a color by the general art that I cannot remember. And then I think the, uh, I used just a random gold and the uh, browns that were called for. But I love this so much. I am going to finish it into a boot at some point. Um, I also want to show you the kind of fabric placement decisions. I can't remember if I mentioned this last video. But like, these are the fabric placement decisions that you make at Stitch Shenanigans. I don't know. <laughs> it would have made much more sense to just do it here. Did I do that? No. Did I center it on the fabric? No. I have no idea what I was thinking. But there you go. It's beautiful. It's done. It's one of my unicorn charts. It is now checked off the list. <sighs> I had more finishes and FFOs than I thought I would. I thought I haven't stitched that much lately because um, I ended up with something with my shoulder. I'm pretty sure it's bursitis because I've had that before just in my hip. And yeah. If you've ever had bursitis, not recommended. It will mess up your life for a good, you know, six months. Oh, I'm all over the place, y'all. Whips. So, I ended up working on Again, more projects than I thought over the past few months. Uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is Garden Sampler by Rosewood Manor. This is a download from Hershners.com. It's only like three or four dollars. It's a very cheap pattern, but it's very, very pretty. Uh, it is stitched on 32 count Valor by Picture This Plus using the called for Valdani threads and here is how far I have gotten. Oops. Sorry, my light is doing funky things today. 
and it's washing out the green. Oh well. Probably seen it before in one of my other videos, so just use your imagination. It's a very lovely, very light green. Um, but I am meh, third of the way done, maybe. Something like that. The problem, well it's not a problem exactly, it's just kind of annoying, is that each of these designs, each of these flowers has a billion colors in it. So like you look at, you know, this little guy. You think, oh, that's lovely. It's, you know, purple and green. I think he's got like six different colors in it. It's got purple, it's got red, it's got green and brown and there maybe a white in there. It's got gray. It, there's a ton of colors. So it's it's beautiful. I love the way it's turning out. It's very finicky to work on just because there are so many colors. Um, and because I really, really, really need to put my floss on floss drops and just haven't, or thread drops and just haven't yet done it. So they look like this. Not recommended. I have thread drops. I just have been lazy and haven't put these on the thread drops. So I was like, oh, they're too nice. I don't want to use them yet. They're paper. Use the thread drops. They're beautiful. You'll get more. I have issues, y'all. Issues. All right. Whip number two. Hmm. Oh, I like that color. Okay. Well, I just solved one of my uh, one of my problems with this whip and just made a decision. Wonderful. You'll see why I have that face in just a second. But uh, yeah. So Jen, Jen Stitchy Niche, she's been working on with that needle and thread charts all year. I had started this one with her back in and several others uh, back in January, I think, was a Brick House Sampler. Now I loved this chart because that beautiful red house, rich red brick house. It's gorgeous. I love it. I was stitching this at a retreat going right along and I happened to sit back and look at it and I thought if I love that red brick house so much why am I stitching a pink house why I don't know I've gotten all this done and I realized that instead of beautiful red my stain of what is that color? Used brick is pink or has very pink tones. So I got to here and I thought, wait a second, why am I doing this? And everybody's like, oh, it looks great, it looks great, it looks great. But I didn't like it because it had a pink house. I liked it because it had a red house. So I started auditioning another color. I started auditioning um, the Week Style Works Cayenne that I had left over from um, Liberty. And in the light of the stitching room, I wasn't quite sure. And I thought that I would um, jump over here and stitch some of the other colors to see which one I like best. But looking at it now, I really like the red of the Cayenne. Like that, that is what I liked about this picture. So I'm gonna rip out all the pink, all the pink, and I'm gonna restitch it. Because if I'm gonna spend that much time on something, I wanna be happy with it. And because I have, there are two other charts of hers that have that look very similar to this. They have a red house, they have the flowers, the birds, and everything. 
eventually I would love to stitch all of those. And I don't want to have two that have red houses and one that has a pink house. So, there's going to be some frogging in my future. And I know everyone thinks I'm insane. And everyone's like, oh, it looks fine. It looks fine. The pink is fine. It's barely noticeable. It looks great. It's not what I want. And if it's not what I want, then I'm never going to stitch on it. And I haven't stitched on it since that retreat because I just didn't want to make that decision. But decision is made. Thank you, Floss Tube. We're going with the Cayenne. I'm going to have a red house. It's going to be glorious. I just have to pick out all of that. One over two stitching on 40 count vintage country mocha, which is something I forgot to mention. So many parts to uh, floss to you. You gotta mention the fabric, you gotta mention the thread, you gotta mention the designer, you gotta mention the chart name. <sighs> All right. Next up. Now, this is one that I have had no problems with the collar. This is. E. Blazer, 19, 1854 by the Traveling Stitcher. Um, it's a terrible photo. Mine looks nothing like this because I'm using a color conversion that is partly from the attic and partly from me because when I pulled the threads for the color conversion, I realized I didn't really like some of them or I felt that one was too orange or this was just way too lime green or something like that so I just I changed them uh, these are the colors and I can't tell you which colors I'm using because the attic does not want you to do that they want you to um, if you're interested in the color conversion they would like you to purchase the chart from them and ask them for the color conversion which is what I did Sorry, I'm trying to get things back in the bag and it's not cooperating. But here's where I am so far. And again, lighting issues for days. Seriously. I had great light when I started. Kind of. Alright. This is as the entire width of the sampler. And again, you can't tell. I'm trying to figure out if it would make it better or worse if I opened one of these blinds. I think it would actually make it worse. Because I tried that earlier. I thought, oh, well, if I open all the blinds, I'll have tons of natural light. It'll be great. My face was orange. A little too much natural light. Anyway, this is the width of the sampler, which you can barely see. And this is a page finish, basically. That's better for the colors. It's difficult to tell, but there actually are um, two different kind of pinkish tones, like this row of uh, Four, five letters I think is in um, two different shades of pink and there are two different green tones but so you could probably get by with just one of them but I liked that it had a very very subtle difference um, I didn't want it to be I didn't want the colors to be wildly different I wanted them to be um, to look a little more um, just Primarily pink, white, and green with some brown and blue. And you could not see that because, again, terrible lighting. Oh, that's better. Sunny day, giant windows. No good lighting. Go figure. All right. I also had two new starts since I saw you last. One of them I failed miserably at. Uh, this was supposed to be, my guild was having a class on how to put together a biscornia, which 
I've never done it before. I know the theory of how to do it, and I don't think it would be nearly as difficult as some of the other things I have put together. See drum pin cushion, see that tiny little sampler pin, the mattress pin cushion that I made and showed in one of my previous videos. That was an enormous pain. Um, but I thought, oh, well, I'm gonna start. I have this kit, Lizzie Kate's Hoot. I have this in my stash. So I'm gonna start it and I'm gonna finish it and put it together at the meeting. And this is how far I got. Which way is this facing? You know what, it doesn't matter. Ha, huh. great progress. I got one corner. Um, I had thought, uh, my husband and I traveled to Portland, Oregon um, for vacation and because a couple of friends were getting married and I thought, oh, I'm going to stitch, I'm going to take this on the plane, I'm going to stitch on, on the plane, I'm going to get a ton of stitching done. Well, it was one of the few times when I got horribly motion sick on the plane and there was no stitching in my future. There was no anything on my flight. There was napping on the flight. That was great. Really. So the Biscornia did not get done. The meeting has long since passed. Now it's a whip. I don't know when I'll finish it. I'll finish it eventually. It is super cute. I'm using um, the DMC because I could not be bothered to pull the specialty threads it calls for. Um, so I just, eh, DMC is fine. I think I changed a couple of them uh, to make them lighter in some places or darker in others. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's the DMC it's called for. All right. Second new start. I just started just last week. Um, kind of got an early start on Dark October stitching. And was so excited to start this and thought I was going to get so much progress. And I could knock it out by the end of October because it's actually a super easy stitch. And I love it. And then there was the bursitis issue and I have not gotten as much done as I had hoped because it's really hard to stitch when you have to basically like sit on one hand so that you don't move that shoulder. <sighs> yeah. But this is Prairie Moon Garden of Skull. Now, their model is stitched on 40 count camo fudge by Stitches and Spice. Uh, Stitches and Spice is no longer in business, I don't think. Actually, I'm pretty sure they're not. Um, and they used uh, silk floss. I am stitching mine on 40 count vintage autumn gold by Lakeside, and I am just using DMC. So this is how far I've gotten in a week with, again, barely stitching. Um, you can't really, well, that's a little better. Um, you can't tell the color as well, but it's a really lovely um, golden brown with some um, almost slightly redder splotches um, throughout. I normally start in the middle. In this one, I started at the top left because the chart does not have, it's on four different pages and there's no overlap. So I was looking at starting, I was looking at that center motif and I thought, no, I'm not bouncing back and forth between four different pages to stitch a motif. I'm just going to start in the corner and it'll be fine. And you can tell I did my little test swatch. So I had like, because I wanted to make sure the coverage would be okay. So this is, um, two of these are DMC 310 and then one is Anchor Black. Um, I ended up going with the 310 just because I didn't see a noticeable difference. Um, and I have lots of 310 and not a lot of Anchor Black, so. 
Um, but I love this. I hope I can make a lot more progress on it. Maybe finish it by the end of October. Who knows? Depends on if my uh, shoulder will cooperate at least somewhat. All right. We had FFOs, we had finishes, we had whips, and new starts. I have, I have a pile around me. Um, next up, before I get into the haul, I am gonna have two quick giveaways um, because I, I didn't check it today, but I think the last time I checked, my subscriber numbers were around 2,500, which was surprising. Yay. Um, but at any rate, I, it's been a while since I did a giveaway, so I figured why not? Uh, so these are two charts that I recently finished. The first one that I'm going, that is up for offer, is the chart only for the Bucilla Lace Partridge. Um, I did not use, this calls for red Ada and just white floss, so you can easily use, I mean, it's a monochrome, you can use whatever you want. Um, even though I didn't use the Ada, I just threw it away because seriously, it was, it was gross. No one would want to stitch on that. Uh, so this is just the chart, but if you would like to stitch this, um, don't say giveaway, just say, um, I would like to stitch the partridge. P-A-R-T-R-I-D-G-E. I would like to stitch the partridge. And I'll send you the chart for that. And the second thing I have to give away is this issue of just cross stitch. I was gonna sell it because I had all, uh, selling all the stuff, but um, whoops, had some cover issues. So I was like, eh, I'll just give it away. It's fine. This is the issue that had Be Happy by the Primitive Hair which I have previously, I should have finished in my last video. Uh, it also has some cute design. It has the, the strawberries, but I think that's Nikki's Creations. Uh, it has this hands-on design. Um, there's this sampler that's stitched on perforated paper. You have this uh, needle set. So there's some cute stuff in here. Uh, but if you would like to stitch this one, or if you would like this one, um, just say I would like the magazine. So magazine is the word I'll be looking for. So partridge for one and magazine for the other. You can um, you can enter for one, you can enter for both. Either is fine. Um, you can only win one. So if your name is drawn for both, then I will um, draw a uh, another winner for for the second one. Um, but I am going to close that on, let's see. I should always choose dates before I come in here because I can never remember the dates. Oh, today's the 29th. Sorry, the 30th. Let's say two weeks. So today's 29th. Of September I think two weeks from today is when it'll close and I'll draw the winner and we'll post at least a quick like hey they're not announcing the winner video so you'll know who won so you don't have to wait like you know three to four months for me to get off my butt and make a frosty video all right it's partridge magazine Two weeks from today, which is September 29th, I believe. <sighs> Dates, y'all. Dates are hard. Um, and I'll draw a winner and announce it here by um, right after a draw. Cool. So now it's time for a haul. I'm not going to show you all of my haul because it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Um, actually, I feel like I'm kind of at net zero because I pulled out a lot of things to sell and I've been getting rid of those on stash and load, stash unloading, those sites. So 
really, I got rid of about as much as I brought in. So I'm really at net zero, but still a lot. Uh, so I just picked the most special things to show you. Um, are the charts that I'm most excited about, or the charts that not everyone is going to have in their haul videos. There are some things that you'll, that I got that I'm just like, I picked it up because it was 10 cents or 25 cents at my guild stash sale, and I thought, I might stitch that. Those I tend to pick up, and I put them in a way, and then during my, like, quarterly purges of my cross stitch stash I'll go through and pull it and evaluate how I feel about it because you know for like a quarter yeah sure um but anyway I'm not showing you those I'm just going to show you the stuff that I got that I'm really excited about so first up Stitches and things. Deb had, I believe, purchased, she purchased the inventory from a store or a couple of stores that had closed. And among them were a lot, a lot of out of print charts um, from various designers. But she had posted on several groups that I'm a member of that she was going to have this sale uh, and she was going to have everything go live. On this one day and you would you know go live at a certain time so I thought mm, okay maybe there's gonna be a lot of people I probably won't you know won't get much but sure I'll try my luck well my luck was very lucky indeed uh, because I managed to figure out her website and figure out like kind of at the the interval that you need to click refresh in order to see each item go live and then how fast you need to be to click add to cart. So I got more things than I thought I would. Um, the first couple of things I got were some good housewife charts. I picked up Jack the Halloween cat. I don't go for too many of her cat designs, but I really like this one. I think it's the, um, the kind of quilt type pattern at the bottom and this one had been on my list this is the Westover sampler thought that looked pretty funky and the real reason I had logged in was for the Blackbird designs charts and those I was thinking oh there's no way I'm gonna get there, there's no way I'm going to get anything good. Again, surprise. Uh, I picked up, this is not, I don't think this is, out, this one's not out of print, but this is the Give Thanks sewing box. Because I don't have a lot of Thanksgiving type patterns. And it has a pink keep chart. I picked up Vintage Bloom, which had been on my list. I don't know if I'll do it in the funky colors. I might tone it down just a little, um, or I'll find some kind of the vintage pieces that I have from their stores and match colors to one of those, depending on where I want it to go in the house. I was super excited about this one. I picked up Wild Rose Journal Cover, which I didn't know it was one of these teeny little charts. I got Pumpkin Blossom Needle Case, which I only ever see the front of this chart. Here's the back. So you get the chart for the exterior on the front, and then there's the alphabet and these little birds. And finally, I got Willow House. So 
So I was really excited about all of those. Um, three of them were on my list, uh, or three of the Blackbird designs were on my list. Two of them were just kind of bonuses. And then the Good Housewife, um, always, a, always a bonus. Now, Deb also had mentioned, I saw that she mentioned in a post that she had had some primitive needle charts and that they had sold out quickly. But the sale is on a, a Sunday, I think. Saturday or Sunday, maybe it's Saturday. Uh, and she had said that she was gonna start emptying people's carts on Wednesday. So if they had not yet made their purchase, she was going to empty the cart and it would go back out into the world. So other people would have an opportunity to purchase. Well, I thought, I'll just check and see what's there. Can't hurt. Oh, I'm so glad I checked. Because with excellent timing, when I happened to click on the site was when these beauties were released. Primitive Needles Earth Sampler. I have, um, I really like this series. I think there are four or five. I have Yule Sampler and now Earth Sampler. And I have another one that I'll show. There are five, because there are two I don't have. I don't have, um, I'll get to that in a, a little later, but earth sampler and simply live and this one I'll probably change the colors on because they're a little bit bright um, although I don't know now that I'm looking at it they kind of match my uh, the tablecloth on my uh, dining room table over here in the corner so who knows That was my stitches and things haul. Then I also went to two Katrina Limboy retreats this summer. I went to um, one up in Franklin, Tennessee, and I went to one in Marietta. So the one in Franklin, Tennessee, I thought, well, since I'm driving all the way up there, I'm gonna take the time and go buy um, some cross stitch shops in Alabama that I haven't been to before, or that I, um, there's one, there was one cross stitch shop in Alabama that I had not been to before, and it was called um, Stitcher's Haven. And to get there from here, it's a pretty decent drive. It's about a, almost a three hour drive from here. Um, but I thought, you know what? I'm going up to Franklin. This will add three hours to my drive that way, but, I won't have to make the three hour drive back. So I'll actually be saving time. This this made sense to me. So the first thing I did was stop by a shop that I had previously been to called Out of the Box in Boaz, Alabama, because the last time I left some things on the shelf and I kind of regretted doing that. So, stop by, I picked up uh, my pink rose. I don't know if this one's out of print. I just grabbed it because it was on the shelf. I was like, oh, I don't have that one. Sure. Added to the basket. Why not? This is one of the reasons I went back. Blue Birch Thread Keep. This one is out of print. An Anonymous Sampler by Chart Makers. I've seen someone stitching this one. And it's actually what uh, made me change my mind. I thought, dang it, I need to go back and get that one. Um, and Boaz is directly on the way to um, Guntersville, which is where Stitcher's Haven is. So it was really, it wasn't out of my way at all. It was literally just get off at this exit and, or make this turn, stop here, now get back on the highway. I picked uh, Stars and Stripes by Blackbird Designs. I really like this one. I've had several opportunities to buy it. I don't know why I never did. But now it's mine. And finally, I picked up these Plum Street sampler charts. Gather. Gobble. and give. 
And because I had been in the store before and I knew where all of these charts were, I was in there for literally 10 minutes. Stopped my car, ran in, went boop, 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 boop. Got all the charts, paid, and was out the door. Because I'm like, I have a schedule. So, after I hit there, I went up to Citrus Haven. Um, and at first I got, really I got really worried because they're supposed to open at, I think, 10. Um, so I got there right after 10. It was like 10, 15. And they weren't open. And I was all like, Ew, what am I gonna do? So I decided to wait around for a bit. Um, I didn't want to be too late because there was another shop on the way to um, in Tennessee that I wanted to stop at. I'm like, I'll hang around. I'll wait as long as I can. So I waited and waited. They weren't open. I finally said, fine, I gotta go. I'm gonna, I'll get lunch at McDonald's down the street and then I'll go. Well, I got lunch at McDonald's. I was just gonna eat in my car and was driving back. And if you've never been to Guntersville, it's a lot of little one-way street. Like it's basically like a circle with a lot of little streets that cut through. So I thought, you know, I go into McDonald's, I'm going down one, I'm like, oh, I'll drive by one more time. And they were open. <sighs> I am so, so glad they were open and it finally paid off because I had the jackpot there. I got so much good stuff from Blackbird Designs. First couple things I picked up, there is Justice for All. And Union Forever. I already had the companion piece to this, which uh, is Grand Old Flag. I got Bittersweet Moon. And a Valentine message. This is Violet's Blue, which I actually had in my cart at one point before it went out of print and then said, no, I'm going to be good. I'm going to put it back. Now, I do not put things back. If I want it, buy it. At least if it's Blackbird Designs or Primitive Needle or Good Housewife or Prairie Moon, if it's in my hot little hands and I think I might want to stitch that someday, I buy it because otherwise I may never see it again, says the woman who once held Witch's Hollow in her hand and set, and ABC Hornbook and by Primitive Needle and said, mm, they're cute, but I don't think I'd ever stitch them. Stupid. <sighs> That's why let's play. I got Crying a Tree, which is one that I've wanted for a while and finally just bit the bullet and got it. The one I am most excited about, I got Merry Christmas Ella on. Ugh. She just had this basket of Christmas charts and I was flipping through and I got crowning the tree out and then keep flipping. And I was like, <gasps> love it, love it, love it. And finally, I picked up Hornbook Angel by Primitive Needle. I feel like I am really good at finding the B-list Primitive Needle charts. Not necessarily the A-list, but the B-list. I am all over the B-list. So that was my haul for that store. Um, after that, I went up to Murfreesboro, Tennessee and stopped at, what's it called? can't remember what it's called. Cross stitch covered? I don't know. It's the store in Murfreesboro. It's the only cross stitch store in Murfreesboro. Um, 
and there I just got a couple things they didn't have a huge selection uh, but I did pick up Halloween Eve and remember me From there I went on to Franklin where we had the actual retreat at the Drury Inn. Um, I thought I was going to die because I'm driving down the interstate and I drive under an overpass so like I can no longer take that exit. That is not an option for me any anymore. And as soon as I come up under the underpass I look up ahead and up ahead like a couple miles you can see it is raining so hard you cannot see the interstate you can't see the mountains you can see nothing it's just like a cloud has descended across the interstate and i'm thinking crap that's not gonna be fun it was not fun mm -mm, no i'm not really timid about driving in rain about driving in snow like i'm I can deal with it it's fine but this was like the rain was being hurled at my car by God himself the lightning was right beside me the thunder was inside my car it was intense uh, and at one point I'm thinking should I pull over should I get off at this exit but the thing is I don't know where I am I don't want to be using a GPS in like the end of the world so I might as well just stay on the interstate where I just need to go straight and stay in one lane instead of having to worry about turns and you know shoulders and lights and whatnot so thank god that only lasted for a couple miles and then I got off at my exit and just sat in the parking lot until it calmed down a bit and I could go inside without dying um, but it was a really fun retreat once we got past the uh, the the wrath of God, uh, Jen from Jen Stitch Stitching Niche was there. I got to meet her sisters and um, the famous Lisha. And Jen and I were talking about the charts that I found on my way up and some of the prim needle charts. And she goes, "Oh, I have I have one in my room for you." So she gave me Mystic Sampler. So now I have Yule Sampler, Mystic Sampler, and Earth Sampler. So I'm looking, so I just need um, Hallow Sampler and Hoodoo Voodoo. Hoodoo Voodoo is another one of those that I held in my hand and said, no, I don't think I'm going to stitch it. I made very poor decisions earlier in life. It was really great because I had just bought this fabric from Katrina. Um, this is 40 Count Beach Walk by Under the Sea Fabrics, and you're not going to be able to see the color of it. Uh, but it's kind of... Um, blue and tan and gray, I guess. Yeah, you might be able to see a gray color because it's all washed out. But I think it's going to look really fabulous with, with this chart. So be on the lookout for that as a future start. Then my EGA had their stash sale, which I normally rack up at the stash sale. Last year I found five out of print, out of print Blackbird Designs charts for a grand total of three dollars yeah including strawberry garden it was a glorious day i didn't find quite as much this go around but i did find some good stuff i picked up and for really great prices i mean you can't beat the prices here uh, i picked up irene's hive by you and i and friends cute quick hole stitch I got Prairie House by You and I and Friends, and Lori of Mischievous Stitches just had this one framed, and it looks 
gorgeous. You should really go to her channel or her Instagram and see pictures of her finish uh, because it is what, like from the picture of the chart, I would have said, oh, that's cute, but no. But her finish is really, really beautiful. And it was 25 cents. We got Be Ye Thankful by the Cricut Collection. With the bonus of these little scrolls. There's Stockings and More by the Prairie Schooler. For 10 cents. Up just hatched. And it's companion chart farm fresh. American strawberries. And my favorite prairie school I picked up, and this is one that's been on my wish list for a while, Christmas trees because I love this one and this one, this one. Love this, especially this one. That's my favorite. I got this Sheepish Antiques PM sampler because I really liked the colors. I don't know what this thing in the middle is supposed to be with its like I mean, queen stitches and the bowl and the whatever. But I really like the colors on this one and the, the specialty stitches. I found Hooked Rabbit Pin Cushion by The Good Huswife, which is one I did not have. This was a surprise. This was, uh, this is Erica Michaels Hollyberry, um, the silk version. I bought this. I assumed that it was used. No, it still has the silk gauze in it. Uh, when I opened it up to, to look at the chart, the piece of gauze fell out. I was like, Sweet. Don't have to buy that. I've never stitched on silk gauze before, but look at a shot. I was very excited about this one. Uh, for 50 cents, Plum Street Sampler's Red Cottage. I was especially excited when I picked it up and flipped it around and realized it has fabric with it. Now this is a 28 count light mocha cashel. Um, I don't really stitch on 28 on, um, I don't stitch over two on 28 count. And this has over one, this little house, whoop, like, this little house is over one. So I can't stitch this over one on 28. Um, but I can find a use for that fabric. And the last big thing I picked up there. So I had been, um, flipping through some charts. I had found a couple, um, Perman samplers, uh, and they were like a dollar or two. And I had just picked them up and put them in my pile because I thought, mm, they're cute. Or they're nice. They're pretty. I appreciate them. I might stitch them. You know, otherwise they're just gonna sit in my stash for a couple years and maybe at one point I decide I no longer want to stitch it or I find somebody who really wants it and I give it away or something. Um, but then a, I heard a woman beside me talking and she's like, oh, I was looking for this one sampler that my friend told me she had put in this box and I can't find it. It's this Perman sampler and it's only a dollar. And I'm like, I think I have that in my pile. <laughs> So I start flipping through it. I was like, is this the one you're looking for? Because, you know, it's it's not one that was on my, you know, it, it's, it wasn't like, um, like, I don't know, this chart or something where I said, I am definitely going to stitch this. I really want to stitch this. It was one of those that I just thought, oh, that's nice. Maybe someday. Probably not. But maybe. And for a dollar, it's worth taking a, ch taking a chance. She's like, oh my gosh, that's it. That's the one I wanted. Thank you so much. Are you sure you don't want it? I'm like, no, no. You, you will appreciate that a thousand times more than I would. Please take it. It's yours. So I'm standing in line to check out, and somebody walks up to me and is like, 
hey, you won $5. And just like shoves a $5 bill in my hand and runs away. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but that did enable me to, when they put everything half price, I was able to go back and snag this permanent chart, which I really wanted. This is ordinarily only available as a kit. Uh, so this is someone had, had obviously stitched the kit and had just put the chart out. Uh, so when it went on sale half price, it was only $5. So I spent my $5 on this because I love it. And this is, what is the name? Sampler 1852. Love it. So yeah, not quite as much as I've gotten in the past. There have been times when I've just got like a stack of things. Oh, one thing I'm not showing you that I did rack up on, I'm so happy to get. Uh, they had this bag, uh, like a set of the zipper bags that like a set of sheets would come in. Uh, they had one of those and it was full of Q-snap pieces. They were all broken down. None of them were put together. They were just random pieces. And it was $10 for the bag. And I looked at it and I thought, that could be a pretty good deal depending on what's in there and if they're, you know, actually still tight and they're not, they haven't all loosened up. So I started digging around the bag. I'm like, they feel okay. they would be probably worth $10. So I bought it and I sat down and started putting them together to see what I had. Two six inch two eight inch and 11 inch uh some 17 inch uh or 14 inch extender things some 17 inch extender things and some extra clamps for the eight inch i'm like score i basically got almost 80 dollars worth of q-snap parts for 10 bucks it was fabulous uh, i'm not showing those because i mean they're q-snaps you know what they look like if you've seen one you've seen them all um but that was my, I felt that like that was really my find of the day. <laughs> I bring them home and my husband's like, don't you already have those? It's okay. You can have more than one. The more the merrier. It's a good thing. It means I can start more projects. Oops. It's great. Next stash. I'm almost done, y'all. Oh my god. So much stash. Um, hang on. I had set down my frame on top of my next pile. Amateur mistake. Uh, so I mentioned I went to two of Katrina's retreats. The second one I went to was uh, in Marietta, so not too far from where I live. And that's always that's always a lot of fun because the women who go are primarily uh women from my guild or women uh from Flossie. like lori was there um you know d square donna was there uh just it, it's always a lot of a lot of fun uh, we laugh you know it was great i had such a good time uh, one person who had also been at the franklin retreat was like I thought you were so timid at the Franklin retreat. <laughs> like, oh, that's just until I get settled. You know, it, 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 I, I, I need to learn the ring first. Then, then I'll come out. Uh, but while I was there, you know, Katrina brings her little, uh, her mobile store and sets up. So I did pick up a couple things. Um, I've been eyeing this Stacy Nash Gathering the Green sampler for some time. And I cannot remember who started this on Instagram, but they did, and it was gorgeous, and it kind of pushed me over into go ahead and get that. And I also just impulsively picked up Quilts and Quakers by La Dida. Because I really like the colors and the patterns. And on her freebie table, I found this. Now the colors on the front of this are kind of eh. It's pretty, but it wouldn't have really sold me if it hadn't also included the floss. And those are much prettier and more subtle than they're showing up here. So I really liked the colors. 
Um, this is Vanilla Custis Rose Wreath. I think it's by the Posy Collection. Yeah, by the Posy Collection. You can get this kit on 123 Stitch. Um, but got it for free. So I'm really looking forward to starting that one. I love the colors. I think they're pretty. And finally, last but not least, a few things that I've gotten online. Uh, just the highlights. The good stuff. I was browsing on Amazon and thought, why not try some different keywords? And I tried the Good Housewife, and these came up for like $8 each in March and in April. I think this one's available on her Etsy shop. It was just cheaper for me to get the, um, from the person who was selling through Amazon. And Wife Into Thy Garden. Picked up several different things on eBay. Uh, there was Stacy Nash Pronov's Old White Farmhouse Sampler, just the chart. You can find that you can still find the kit. The kit comes with the chart and then the threads. Um, but I figured I have so many threads. I'm sure I have something that'll work for this. I got Vintage Inspiration by Blackbird Designs. Which let me see. Here's a better picture of the big sampler. This is the uh, original, not the reproduction. And then this is just the alphabets. I got my favorite primitive stitching bags. If you'll remember a couple of videos ago, I showed I had gotten the uh, the second version of this. More of my favorite permanent stitching bags, but this is the first one and the one that I really wanted. So happy to find that. I got a really good price on a Prairie Year Two. I already have a Prairie Year One. Uh, this one. I like all of them. I really liked the Beehive, the Witch, and the Bell. That, that, that. This one I found on one of the stash and loading groups. It is Good Housewife Tree of Life. It's beautiful. I had been eyeing this sampler and then it became super popular and then it was out of print and then nobody could find it. And I managed to find it at the last copy at House of Stitches. This is Sally Spencer. She had been on my list for some time and I was, I was like, I got time, I got time, I got time. And then it was out of print. And the very last thing I got, very last thing I have to show you is um, Bullock Hall uh, up in Roswell, Georgia. They had a sampler um, or a needlework display uh, that some women from the Magnolia Sampler Guild uh, stitched pieces and contributed to. So when they had the Smithsonian Museum Day where you could pick a museum and get in for free, uh, Bullock Hall was on the list. So my husband agreed to go up to Roswell with me and go see the, see the house, see, or see the, um, the house and the grounds and see the needlework exhibit. So we were there and they also had a little, uh, traveling store set up by one of the women in our guild. And I looked through and I decided to, I was trying to restrain myself, but I had never seen this one before. So I picked up Heartstring Sampleries, Victorian Posey. 
this is the reproduction and this is the original. And she had um, a trunk show there from Heartstring Samplery, so she had a lot of models and she had the model of this one. And you can't, oh uh, yeah, you can kind of tell from here, from the video, but it has this beaded edging. I don't know if I'll do the beaded edging. Um, that might be a bit much for me, but I did really love the colors in this. Apparently I'm a sucker for floral wreaths in moody colors. What can I say? Emily's rubbing off on me. Okay, so I think that is finally, finally everything. Yes. Uh, I am going to be stitching the next few weeks on, um, I'm going to continue on with Garden of Skulls because I want to see how far I can get with that one. And it's fairly easy. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of color changes, so it's good with, um, since I'm down to just one arm at the moment, uh, doesn't require a lot of color changes, doesn't require a lot of starting and finishing. I can pretty much just start a thread and stitch to the end of the thread. Um, instead of just doing a few stitches here, a few stitches there. So I'm going to continue on with that. Um, I don't think I have any other needlework stuff or any other stitching stuff going on this fall. Um, don't have any retreats planned for the rest of the year. So should just be sitting here and stitching. Got maybe going to some stitching groups. I had to miss our Hawk Run Hollow group yesterday because my arm hurt a lot more yesterday than it does today, so there was no way I could sit there in a chair and stitch or pretend to stitch for that long. It was more of a day of sit on the couch uh, with ibuprofen and a heating pad and watch your posture. Not fun. Not recommended. Oh, I am going to uh, my Sampler Guilds retreat in March. I've never gone before, um, but next year in 2020, they have uh, Teresa Kitten Stitcher, Shapes with Peddler. Uh, she's going to be there, so she's going to be. Um, uh, she'll have her store. I think she's offering a kit. I can't remember. I don't know. They said Shapes with Peddler will be there, and I said. Here's my registration, here's my money, sign me up, done. Great. So I'm really looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. Um, other than that, I think that's it for me. In this up so I can go ahead and get some cleaning done and get some things around the house done before my husband comes back and uh, hopefully remember all the little things that I said I would put in the show notes below uh, or put in the description box below. If I miss anything, call me out on the comments and I'll add it back in. Um, but other than that, it was great to see y'all again. It's great to show you all my stuff so I can get this out of my living room and, and make my husband and myself very happy. <laughs> and I'll catch you again next time. Until then, happy stitching. Bye.